quasi arrivati? Ancora un chilometro. Deve essere qui. Dai, dai, pesto! È meglio che l'alzi un poco. Franco, eccoli! Gira. This is the 1958 Coupe des Alpes. 56 production cars from eight countries struggling to win a cup. An Alpine Cup, the dream of every rally driver. To win a cup, your car must maintain a set average speed over a 2,400 mile course. From the coast, it's easy going to the Alps. Then across the border into Italy by night, and a race to the end of the first stage at Brescia, 600 miles without a break. The second stage swings northeast over the toughest passes in the Dolomites, then back towards France again to finish at Megève. But there's worse to come. The final stage twists south via Gap, an 1,100-mile stretch to end at Marseille. 73 hours driving with only three breaks. And to make sure that you keep up your average, there are 73 checkpoints along the route. One second late at any of these, and your cup is lost. Marseille, and Paddy Hopkirk's triumph is the first car to take its place on the starting rail. He's off. And the second man's off too. French champion Storez with his German Porsche is a contender for a cup. So too is Collange, winner in 56, again on an Alfa Romeo. The time card is handed to Ronnie Adams. Any Monty winner is a serious challenge. And so, believe it or not, is Phil Kent. But none doubt the seriousness of the battle for the ladies' prize. Annie Swabo, only 22, but already French women's champion. Pat Moss, Sterling's sister, a rising star, but new to the Alpine. So is Mary Handley Page with her works rapier. European champion Nancy Mitchell won the ladies' prize and the cup last time. Anne Hall did the same in 53, and she's out to do it again now. <laughs> Here comes the first real challenge. Up the Col d'Espigulier, you've got to average nearly 40 miles an hour. <laughs> Delia's Citroen is going well. So is Harrison Zephyr. Peter Harper is Britain's most successful rally driver, but his Sunbeam is being harassed by a Volvo. Harper's rival, Gunnar Andersen from Sweden, is well on his way to becoming champion rally driver of Europe. Meredith Owens is trying hard too. Steady, you're not alone on the road, Mr. Owens. Spectators the world over always encourage drivers to go as fast as they can, even when it makes things difficult for those behind. Gatsonides is trying for his third consecutive Alpine Cup. Tommy Wisdom and his little sprite, an old hand on a new car, but already they're finding the going very tough. Bajol, first of the 73 checkpoints and newcomers learn how to stamp the time on that all-important card. Now 
comes that treacherous time between daylight and darkness when long shadows play tricks with the driver's vision. On the Col Saint-Jean, sunlight still lingers, but ahead lie the Alpine giants, Alos, Cayon, Var, and Isoar. The fortunes of many will change during the night. The French-Italian border. Balisette's triumph has made it. And John Gott's on time too, but only by four seconds. Many are less lucky. Anne Wisdom and Pat Moss are the only girls still on time. Now for an easy run through sunny Italy. Lockley's Austin Healy is out on the road to Monza. Monza circuit is one of the special tests, and Storez has high hopes here. Everyone is out to improve on the speed set for his class, so as to win the points that decide the outright winner. The big cars have to average 85 miles an hour for three laps. Tax Mercedes sweeps into the lead. Then the Ferrari and Sears Austin Healy. The checkered flag and two more cups gone. The Ferrari has spun and Adams Ford is late too. Tack has made the fastest time of the day. It's an easy run on a good road to Brescia and most drivers have time to refuel. But even on an easy run, someone can be unlucky. Corbishly standard is three minutes late. Some are pleased with life. Others just want to go to bed. It's time for sleep and the cars are locked away until tomorrow. The first stage has taken a heavy toll. 56 crews left Marseille hoping to win an Alpine Cup, but already 12 have dropped out, and 28 arrived late at a checkpoint. So now only 16 crews can win an Alpine Cup. The second stage runs northeast towards Austria over some of the highest passes in Europe. Croce Domini, Vivione, Pennes, Monte Giovo, Stelvio, and Gavia. Then back towards France again over the Great St. Bernard to finish at Megève and it's a four o'clock start. Near Bagolino, Harrison's Ford storms past towards the Croce Domini, a pass never before used in a rally. There's Therese in his Porsche. And here's his main rival, Constant, in an Alpha. Already, the new pass has claimed a victim. The AC is a write-off, but the crew are safe. If you still think rally driving is easy, just follow Peter Harper on the descent. Now the surface is damp too. Not water, but petrol from tax Mercedes. A stone pierced his tank, and now he must rely on gravity.
Valley of Scalde, everyone is trying to make up time lost before Skilpario, a tighter section than many expected. Storez still has a clean sheet. But now comes the Vivione. Citroen is the only French car left in the rally. It's tough on the cars, but the Jaguar is still in showroom condition. On the descent, everyone is busy making up time before the checkpoint. Now the showroom doesn't seem so close. And the Citroen made it too. But they've left something behind. The Porsche has suffered too, but Storez has kept his clean sheet. on the Paso de Penis. But it's not so bad when you're the first car through like Paddy Hopkirk. Vipiteno, the foot of the Brenner. And now we swing back towards France again. The triumphs of Titterington and Annie Swabo force their way up the Jovo Pass and the visibility is getting worse with every car. Storez can still win a cup, but the Porsche has had another bump. The standard has been driven flat out from the word go, but it's still got plenty of steam. So has Hopkirk's triumph. Pause to cool off, for ahead lies Italy's highest pass. Through Murano, westward towards the Stelvio. That name wakes Annie up. She's third in the ladies' class, but the Stelvio could change things. The leader, Pat Moss, is doubtful of her spark plugs. Teammate Jack Sears is helping, but he runs the risk of losing more time himself. But Annie's got her worries too. Not even a Parisienne can charm that barrier up before the train arrives. And now, there's a Grand Prix to the Stelvio. The Stelvio, 9,000 feet, the most spectacular climb in the world. 